Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to go over some of the basics of Ableton's very powerful audio routing. With focus on the in-out section and how to use that to record instruments and create effects buses and things like that. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the input-output section open. It's actually located on each track just above the sends and just below the clip device drop area. You can show hide the in-out section. Over on the right, there's a little yellow button that says I-O. If you click on it, it will hide it, and you click it again, it'll show it. Alternatively, you can learn the hotkey, which is Command Option I. On a PC, it would be Control Option I. So let's start with the audio from section. We have two drop-down menus. The top one will allow you to select the source. You can actually pull audio from different areas within live, different tracks. You can pull audio even from other VSTs like Machine. I can pull audio directly from Machine, which is over on my MIDI track over here. Or you can pull audio from external inputs, which is EXT in. If you have an audio interface connected and an instrument plugged in or, or a vocal mic or something like that, and even if you don't have an audio interface, you can use external in and select the built-in microphone on your laptop, which is a good way to record quick ideas. After you have selected the source, then you can select the channel. I'm using the Mo2 828 MK3, so I have a lot of channels available, but right now I only have one synth connected, the ARP Odyssey. So what I wanna do is select the channel that I have it plugged into, which happens to be a mono channel on channel five. And if you'll notice, I have stereo options and mono options, depending on what I'm connecting. Like if I wanna sample from turntables, I'm gonna connect stereo, but for my synth, I actually have it connected mono. And now you can see the source audio signal right here in this little dropdown. And you can also see it when I play. It helps me, it actually helps me find it in this list in case I forget where I plugged it in. Now notice you still can't hear anything. So that has to do with the monitor state. These three buttons will decide on how the input signal is, is handled. With monitor set to auto, I won't hear anything unless I arm the track. And then I can hear the synth. I can also record into clips or of course in arrangement view. So I'll just record a quick clip. And now you can hear the clip looping. I'm gonna record a silent clip really quick for the next example. With Auto selected, if there's a clip playing, you will not hear the input source if a clip is playing. But if I disable the clip, I then can hear the input source. Now if I select off, off means I won't hear the input source ever. I will only hear clips when they play. I can still actually record clips. But I just can't hear the source audio. Now if we put monitor to in, that will actually ghost the clips. It doesn't actually disable them. They'll still play, but you just won't hear them. You can only hear the input source of the track. So the clips will actually still play. And this is really good for like dummy clips to create automation, to tweak effects in the track and things like that. But see, if I play the source audio, I can still hear it even if the clip is playing. That's why it's really good for dummy clips. Also, I can disarm the track, which is really handy for like a live performance where I'm not actually going to be recording my signal. Now, if you look down to the, to the bottom, you'll see audio too. This will enable you to route your audio to other tracks or other outputs of your audio interface, which we're gonna get into right now. I'm gonna get into the use cases of the different monitor states and the audio routing functions. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these clips and I renamed the track to ARP in and I'm gonna make another audio track. So I'm just gonna go insert audio track and the hotkey is Command T, Control T on a Mac. And on this audio track, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it ARP Recorded. And then I wanna do audio from ARP in. 
set the monitor state to off and arm the track. And you'll see why I did it this way. I could have actually done audio two and routed it to this track, but I can only route the audio to one track, but I can tap the feed from multiple tracks. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I can select pre effects, post effects or post mixer, and that's where it'll tap the feed. So basically I'm gonna tap it from post mixer because I want any of my mixer decisions to be recorded into the audio so I don't have to redo them. Now I'll go ahead and select the top track and record a quick idea. So I always like to record the phrase twice because sometimes I get it better on the second shot. Let's go ahead and shorten this up a little bit. Uh, maybe the first one was better. I'm gonna go ahead and shorten the loop bracket. So I just record here the first one. And then if you'll notice, I was a little early on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a warp marker here and I'm gonna like lock it in place. Well, let's actually first just go ahead and move it and see if it just tightens everything up by doing that. And a little bit of adjustments on my performance. Cool, this isn't really a warping class. This is more about audio routing. I just wanted to not have horrible audio. So now I wanna record another idea with the same synthesizer. So I'm gonna take a moment to reprogram the sound and then all I have to do, duplicate the track, delete the clip on the track that's armed and I'm queued up to record another phrase. So let's see if I can come up with something to go with that. Cool, I like that as is. Maybe add some reverb, a little bit of delay. Sweet. And now, as you can see, I can just duplicate it again and continue on. Again, deleting back to the original track, deleting the clip, triggering the new clip. And I can layer using one synth. Now, the Arp Odyssey is a awesome synth. It doesn't have um, a lot of things like a workstation. So like a workstation, you'll have drums and all these other things that you might just be flipping around. And this is a quick way to create a quick sound if you're using other synths. I can do a lot more layers on this with the ARP or load another synth or do use a virtual synth. It's really handy. Now you might also see that in a live looping scenario, I could actually arm all of these tracks and then I can record into any clip at any time. Well, let's bring that filter down. So, That third one was a little low, but I was just using my enter key on my mouse and my arrows left and right. I could have mapped out a foot controller or any other controller just to automatically record into the clip and use my scene ups and scene downs. Now for this next scenario, I went ahead and added a uh, drum loop that I snagged off Splice and did a little bit of polish on this phrase. So the goal here is I wanna add an auto filter to sweep everything but I don't wanna to have to put an auto filter on an individual track. And then also it's bad mixing practice to put it on your master bus. Not necessarily for live performance, but for production of a track. So what I'm gonna do is create something called an effects bus. Let's create a new audio track. And then I'm gonna select all three of these tracks and route the audio two to five audio. And let's go ahead and call it effects bus. Now, if you notice, I like to use all caps 
and nice big and bold because when you're looking for your audio tracks in these drop down menus, it helps a lot. So I have bus effects. So I like name all my buses buses and actually any group tracks that we'll get into, I'll call them G group track. So I'm gonna go into audio effects, auto filter, drop a filter on the effects bus. And now make sure to set my monitor state to in. And now the audio will run from these three tracks into my effects bus. And the reason I might not want to use the group bus is because maybe I want to keep my tracks separated because I want to see my drums and my vocals all in different tracks. I don't, I don't necessarily want to group them. And also you cannot group grouped tracks. So if I already had say a drum group, which I usually do, I won't be able to route everything to an effects bus. So there's, there's still cases where you're going to need to use an effects bus in Ableton Live. And I also, and I'd also like to point out that if you're using an effects bus, like how I am to make a filter, and notice that I still have my sends going. So I'm gonna open up my return tracks. And you'll notice when I filter sweep, you'll still hear the unfiltered signal in your sense. Now that sounded pretty cool. I might want to keep that, but sometimes you might want to route your sends also to your effects bus. It just really depends what you're going for here. Now I have everything routed to the effects bus. But say, yeah, that's pretty cool. But you know what I'd like to do is route my effects bus to a send. So let me just go ahead and create a new send by creating a new return track. And then I'm gonna go to audio effects, reverb, and just grab a space reverb. And we'll just get this main verb here. Not really sure. I don't remember how it sounds, but we'll find out in a second. Now I'm going to route the uh, bus effects to that verb. But the only thing is now everything goes to the reverb. But depending on what I'm doing, that might be cool. I just wanted to demonstrate that because now this reverb is going straight to the master and these other three are not. So let's hear how that sounds. So anyway, you can have a lot of fun with effects routing. Now I wanna talk about one more common use case for audio routing in Ableton Live. And this is for more of a live band, live performer perspective. So let's say you play a few instruments, you sing, you play bass, um, maybe you have another instrumentalist with you playing keys, right? But if you try to mix everything in the box on stage, it's kind of a headache and it takes away from your performance. So the best thing to do is send track separations out. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna create a few audio tracks. In fact, let's just use the ones I already have. We'll use these audio tracks here and we'll just rename them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these other two tracks because we don't really need them. And I'm gonna need to switch my audio interface to a different audio interface because I only have two outputs here. So now I wanna select external out and then I can select different channels. So we'll put the vocals on three, external out, four and external out five. And I could set all of the monitor states to in. So that way I don't have to arm the track. And then you're free to process the vocals and do all kinds of fun stuff here. But hopefully this helps you get started. And thanks for watching. My name is Jimmy Allison. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons online and in Austin, Texas. 
I can help you set up your rig. I can help you get moving in live. I teach all levels from advanced to beginners. And I can really help cut down your learning curve because they're really focused on exactly what you want to do and exactly where you're going. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.